everyone, my name's Amanda and I'm the Fun Size Reader and today I wanted to talk to you about The Winner's Curse. I actually had this book sitting on my shelves for I think almost two years at this point. I bought it a very long time ago but I'm a mood reader so it takes me a while sometimes to read things that I'm really excited about and I get and then I don't read them forever. This was one of those. So this book is about a girl named Kestrel and she lives in this fantasy world. Um, it's not like a fantasy world that has a bunch of magic and things like that. It's just not our world as we know it. Um, so this fantasy world uh, is a kingdom that is, or a land, I guess it's not really a kingdom. The political structure I still don't really understand in the book, but uh, anyways. So she lives in this land and this land is governed by this one kind of people. And the premise of the book is that this these people took over this other land and basically captured and enslaved the people that were living there and are forcing them to be their slaves and servants uh, while they run the rest of the world. So this book has a very prevalent theme of slavery obviously because of the kind of way that the people came about. But it's about this girl who goes to a market and ends up buying this slave. And he works for her family. Um, it's her and her father, and her father is a general in the military for this place. And the slave, unbeknownst to her, is one of the leaders of the rebellion of this people. And so he's kind of spying on what's going on and then um, you know, a love story kind of comes to be. If you read the back of the book, it seems like super intense and super interesting, but I personally just didn't find it that intense and interesting. It was good, but I didn't think it was as good as when it was recommended to me. Um, I thought that, you know, obviously the, uh, theme of slavery was very, very prevalent, um, but there's also that theme of rebellion. So while I typically don't, you know, really like that theme in books, you know, the, the rebellion aspect of it kind of justifies it being part of the story. But I also just didn't really feel the love story. I wanted to, I really did, but I just, I didn't feel it. And so I think because the romance part of fantasies, especially if it's like, you know, fantasy romance, it's not something that's not supposed to have any romance in it. Uh, if I'm not really feeling that in the book, I don't really love it. Uh, especially since the back of the book indicates that that's like a huge part of the story, which it was supposed to be. I ended up liking some of the side characters a lot more than I think I liked the main character. And while it did end on a cliffhanger, I just don't know how into it I will be to go seek out book two. Will I read it? Maybe eventually, but it, I, I didn't love it enough to be like, I have to order the second book and have it sit on my shelves for another two years before I you know get to it. I just didn't even really have the desire to buy the second one. And that kind of sucks because I, I had people, multiple people that recommended this to me and said it was just so amazing. And I, I just, it fell kind of flat for me. I didn't think the romance was good enough. I didn't like some of the main themes of the story. Um, there were some, you know, twists and turns, but it was fairly predictable. And I, I hate giving bad reviews, but I just didn't love it. I know some people have, obviously the people that recommended it to me. Um, so if you read the back of the book and you think that you want to go for it, go for it. Um, but it wasn't, wasn't my cup of tea. I hate when books don't live up to my expectations, but it is the way it is sometimes. If you want to chat more, you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at the fun size reader. See you next time.